the VSF recovery team. As you can see, we're in the garage again, and if you remember our last video, we left you with the proof that our frame in the wrecker is bent. We determined that we have a bend right here, and that we have to move this portion of the frame up about a half an inch and forward about a half an inch, right here, to get this bend out. And we said we weren't sure how we were going to do that, but we had an idea. Well, if, uh, if we had a collision shop that we could take the wrecker to, normally what they would have is a frame table. Big, huge table the size of the vehicle, which you could put the vehicle on, chain or secure most of the frame of the vehicle, and then there's big, huge towers that move around the frame, and you can pull different corners at just about any angle you want. Now, in our situation we need to pull up and out or up and forward. How are we going to do that? Well, in the old days they used to have frame racks that were kind of built into the floor of the shop and we don't have that either. So what are we going to do? Well, way back when I was young and went to an alignment school down in Davenport, Iowa, a manufacturer of alignment and frame equipment called Beeline. Well, they had a setup that was kind of a uh, steel rectangular box that could go underneath a vehicle and uh, you could use that as kind of a frame rack. So, that got my wheels thinking. I had something out back that just might do the trick. Should we check it out? So here's the piece of scrap iron I had in mind. It's an old framework from underneath a uh, mow, like a county plow truck or something. I think we can put that underneath the wrecker and uh, use that as a sort of makeshift, redneck, same tree, whatever you want to call it, frame rack. But we still need an arm to stick it up so we can pull up and forward. Well, we got that figured out too. We got it welded on there. Hopefully good enough. Now we got to get it underneath the truck. Okay, well we have this framework uh, underneath the director now and we've tied it to the frame on this side in a couple of spots. We've pulled it back so it's nice and snug. We've put a bracket here where we want to straighten the frame or pull on the frame. A little chain and uh, chained it on the other side in a couple of spots to keep it square we're ready to pull. I have no idea if this is going to work, but 
we're going to give it a try. Oh, you're wondering what we're going to pull with. Well, I'll show you. We're going to pull with one of these, a uh, threaded or ratcheting load binder. And if you don't think that these can pull hard, watch. Okay, let's get the tape measure out and see if we've made any progress. Approximately 14 and a quarter to the center of that one bolt hole and we measure down from the top of the frame like we did before see where we're at looks like we're at about seven trying to remember what our other frame was at should we go take a look So our other frame here is six and a half, so we haven't done any movement on that yet. We're still a half an inch low and 14 and a half. So we still have to go a quarter inch forward and a half an inch up. So I think we're definitely pulling it forward, but we might not be pulling up enough. I don't know if there's anything we can do about that the way we have it set up. Yeah. We'll go a little more and see what happens. Fourteen and a, almost fourteen and a quarter. What was our other one? Fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. So we still have to go another quarter inch forward. like we've come up maybe an maybe an eighth of an inch so it's moving not much how hard is that to pull <laughs> tension on there. Fourteen and a quarter. Maybe came up another sixteenth of an inch.
Oh, look at that. Look what we're doing here. This was straight. Holy crap. Well, my welds are holding though. Well, we got a lot of tension on it, and our arm is bending a little bit. And it doesn't look like we're making much progress. I was kind of hoping to do this cold, but. Still got a ways to go. So, looks like we're going to have to put a little heat to it. This is going to take a while. I don't have a rosebud. I only got cutting tips. So you have to be extra careful not to stay in one place for too long? No, I got to be careful not to put the oxygen <laughs> when, I get it too, when I get it hot enough. Uh, but I want to heat it nice and even. Because if I don't heat it even, I can create a fracture line. All right, we'll put a little more tension on it. moved a little bit. Looks like more heat. Oh, that's about on, right? 14 and a half? Yeah. Almost. Kind of Damn eight, close. Like an eighth inch now. Sixteenth. Sixteenth? Yeah. Almost out of there. Well, it looks like we moved it enough. We're back to where we should be. Now, we'll take all this conglomeration that we uh, created off and then put it back together. Well, now that we got the frame back to where it should be, it's time to put our steering back together. I've noticed a lot of you have been commenting about upgrading to crossover steering and or some sort of rock ram assist and while I would love to do that and it is on the list my pockets aren't quite that deep just yet so we're gonna have to put it back together with the push-pull drag link for now but we are gonna reinforce it a little bit I do have one of the off-road design steering box brace kits that we will be installing and we're going to reinforce the bottom flange of that frame. Hopefully that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, stay safe, remember subscribe to this channel and maybe we'll see you out there in the woods. <laughs>